Hi everyone, and in this second design video, we're going to be looking at Boolean logic and some real transistor-based circuits. In the first design video, we looked at what a computer is for and how we can use numbers to represent anything we like by assigning our own meanings to different values. In this video, we're going to see how we can translate numbers into circuits by using an intermediary representation known as Boolean logic. Boolean logic, or Boolean algebra, is named after George Boole, who first introduced this form of maths in 1847. It can be seen as an algebra of decidable propositions. A proposition is a statement of the form, it is true that something. For example, it is true that the sky is often blue. This proposition is true. We can also propose, it is true that the moon is pink. This proposition is false. The following are some statements. Which of them are also valid propositions? So propositions are things that we decide are either true or false. We can also combine propositions using connectives. The basic connectives that we all know are not, and, or. For example, it is not true that the moon is pink. It is true that the sky is often blue and contains clouds. It is true that I am speaking or I am teaching right now. Note that for an or statement, both halves may be true. In fact, I am both speaking and teaching at the moment. And is our other easy connective. It requires both halves of the proposition to be true. We can represent these connectives using a truth table. Four other connectives are also very useful. NOR, NAND, XOR, and XNOR. NOR and NAND are the inversions of OR and AND respectively. We can see this in their truth tables. It's equivalent to putting a NOT on the result of an OR or an AND. XOR means exclusive OR. It's like an OR, except that if both halves are true, the output is false. It's like saying one or the other, but not both. It just so happens that NOR and NAND are fundamental connectives. Using entirely NOR or entirely NAND, we can construct any other logical connective. Minecraft happens to make NOR available to us, so we'll be sticking to looking at NOR gates. In real electronics, we often use NAND instead of NOR for a variety of engineering reasons. OK, we're now ready to look at some transistors. To do this, we're going to use a program called Logisim. I've put the link in the description below. Logisim is great for designing and simulating logic circuits up to what we call the unit level, sometimes called the module level. 
We'll see later how we can simulate bigger systems that combine units using a different program. I'm going to skip past some linear circuits knowledge now and go straight to the usage of transistors that we're interested in, CMOS circuits, complementary metal oxide semiconductors. This is what's used in real computer chips today. Let's start with a simple NOT gate. We connect a P-type transistor to our high voltage and an N-type transistor to our low or our off voltage. What are P and N-type transistors? Well, suffice to say, they are both types of transistors. A P-type allows electricity to flow through it when the switching signal, known as the gate or control signal, is off, and an N-type does the opposite. So they're both switches, but they act in opposite ways. By using them together, we can make fast switching circuits. By creating the circuit in this way, we've made a simple NOT gate as shown. By convention, inputs are labeled A, B, C, and so on, and outputs are often labeled Q. We can now extend this to a NOR gate. and we can see how that matches our truth table from earlier. We can build an AND gate from NOR gates like this. Next, we'll look at an XNOR gate, as it will prove useful later on. We want our output to be on when neither input is on, or when both inputs are on. We'll start with the NOR only version.
If we now redraw this using some AND and OR gates, we can start to optimise our circuit. By applying a property of Boolean algebra, we can step to an equivalent circuit. and then expand our circuit back into only NOR gates. We now have something which is much easier to build both in real life and in Minecraft, as we'll see in the live stream tonight. That's it for this video, thanks for watching. I'll be releasing a third video later today that shows how we can use this understanding to build an adder subtractor circuit. Don't forget to tune into the live stream on my channel tonight to see how we can build these circuits and the adder subtractor in Minecraft. And if you want to make sure you don't miss it, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to enable notifications.